and good morning. It's before 11 a.m. You hear the birds? A lot of birds. Little birds. Nice. I didn't finish the reading yesterday. If I think of what happened, you know, some sort of time-spatial dislocation, especially because I've not read through this. I don't know what's in here. I know there's 28 chapters. That's all I know. I don't, really, I don't know what comes next. And what if you thought you had a, a claim to something? And in order to maintain your claim to something, you had to repeatedly engage in acts of slander and defamation in order to establish and maintain your claim. Periodically, maybe you had to lure people down or call people down and on site. And once they got there, you had to strip them down, take what they had, get them to agree to repudiate who they were, and then convert to whatever the fuck you said was supposed to be the rules of the uh, arrangement. In some ways, I really feel like that's exactly what Texas has been doing. And it's really ironic. The dead timers in Texas love to talk to me. They talk to me for years. They tell me all kinds of stories. I've always had a thing with cemeteries ever since I was a little kid. I don't freak out about it. It's like they give me hints. And if I follow the hints, sometimes I'll find something really amazing and beautiful. History of Texas is very rich. It's very potent. But I don't understand why everybody I've encountered, including is reflected on the public record, is more interested in a fucking casino. You know what I mean? They're more interested in playing these speculative games than actually taking consideration of what they already have right there practically tangibly a lot of the story in the history of texas is building something from nothing and then finding a blessing and trying to make the most of it you know back in the day the first couple of legislators in the state of texas a lot of those guys didn't even go to school a couple of them and one guy in particular his dad taught him to read and after his dad taught him to read, he got a job doing some stuff and got interested in the law. I worked at a law firm. I worked with this guy who did law for a couple of years. We did this thing. It was called Red Into Law. You worked it. You actually did it for a while. And then at some point, you got to be uh, able to practice law. You know, that guy later became a member of the legislature and a mayor. He was a prosecutor, an actual prosecutor. That guy didn't even go to school. That's the spirit of Texas. People doing with what they have. Getting in their spirit, going through some serious, serious wrangling. Now this is like title and other crap. I don't really understand it. See, because after I did the little video and I got pissed last night, I went inside and... I guess you could say I took something away from a little girl. See, that little girl would be pitted against another little girl to compete for what they tried to do to me when I was a little girl. But I got, like, all freaked out and weirded with my gender and, you know, couldn't really figure it out. And my whole thing is like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let them sell futures for little girls where they're supposed to be doing this kind of shit. If anybody would have been qualified to have done that anyway, it would have been me. But their daddy's got some pieces of paper that they were able to get after they took out loans on other people, including, it seems, girls around the age their daughters are now. And now we got a big problem. A big problem. So, I mean, if I had to transpose myself here and say that if you thought it was okay to Jew bash because you had some culture where after you beat down the Jew and you took their good stuff, either they converted to Christianity and followed your lead or you just kept uh, doing what until what? If somebody came, 
They kicked you out, put you in jail, took away your accounts, maybe gave your children some love and self of fucking steam instead of gaslighting them for 25 fucking years. I mean, you could say what you want about it. If you're trying to play this little make-believe game, I guess that's what fucking happened. That's where we are right now with this Cowboys and Palestinian shit. But that chapter's over. We gotta move on to the next fact. What's the next fact in the book? Fallacy. It's a long one. By virtue of the resolution of the General Assembly of the United Nations, we do hereby proclaim the establishment of a Jewish state in the land of Israel, the state of Israel. Israel's Declaration of Independence, 1948. Footnote 20. What do we got here? Footnote 20, huh? Ben Gurion, Israel, 80. Page 80. Fact. It was only strong pressure exerted by the Truman administration that secured passage of the UN Partition Plan by the General Assembly on November 29, 1947, by a vote of 33 to 13 with 10 abstentions and one absent. You know what 13 was? I'm going to have to stop because we got to deal with this. 13 was the number of people that didn't say anything. When they passed that tax bill, dated originally for December 12th of 2016, regarding waiver of the tax on the homestead of the spouse of a first responder killed in action. 13 guys in Texas just didn't say anything, did they? Among those nations that succumbed to U.S. pressure were France, Ethiopia, Haiti, Liberia, Luxembourg, Paraguay, and the Philippines. Footnote 21. Sheldon L. Richmond, Ancient History, U.S. Conduct in the Middle East Since World War II and the Folly of Intervention. Cato Institute Pamphlet, 16 August 1991. Former Under Secretary of State Sumner Wells wrote, By direct order of the White House, every form of pressure, direct and indirect, was brought to bear by American officials upon those countries outside of the Muslim world that were known to be either uncertain or opposed to partition. Representatives or intermediaries were employed by the White House to make sure that the necessary majority would at length be secured. 22. Wells. We need not fail, quoted in Ibid. Also see Mohammed Zafrullah Khan, Thanksgiving Day at Lake Success, November 17, 1947. Carlos P. Romulo, The Philippines Changes Its Vote. And Kermit Roosevelt, Partition of Palestine, A Lesson in Pressure Politics. All in Khalidi from Haven to Conquest, 709 to 22, 723 to 26, 727 to 30, respectively. Future Israeli Foreign Minister Moisa Sharet argued that the resolution had binding force and Israel's Declaration of Independence cited it three times as legal justification for the establishment of the state. 24. Malison and Malison, the Palestine Problem in International Law and World Order, 171. Hmm. I missed 23. Is that a spiritual thing? You mean because I don't intend to pay you that way? Let's keep going. But the General Assembly, in contrast to the Security Council, has no powers beyond making recommendations. It cannot enforce its recommendations, nor are they legally binding, except on internal UN matters. 25. Quigley, Palestine and Israel. 47. The Palestinians, as was their right, rejected the plan because it granted the Jews more than half of Palestine, despite the fact 
but they made up only one-third of the population and owned only 6.59% of the land. 26. Catan. Palestine, the Arabs, and Israel. 29. John Reedy. Dynamics of Land Alienation and Abu Lugold. Transformation of Palestine, 125-134. Said. The Question of Palestine, 98. In addition, the Palestinians maintained that the United Nations had no legal right to recommend partition when the majority inhabitants of Palestine opposed it. Nonetheless, by rejecting partition, Palestinians did not reject their own claim to an independent nation. Their opposition was to a Jewish state established on Palestinian land, not to the Jews' right as a people. Jewish leader David Ben-Gurion advised his colleagues to accept partition because, he told them, there is no such thing in history as a final arrangement, not with regard to the regime, and not with regard to borders, and not with regard to international agreements. 27. David Ben-Gurion, War Diaries, quoted in Philippon, The Birth of Israel. 13. One of Zionism's great pioneers, Nahum Goldman, expressed pragmatism in a different vein. There's no hope for a Jewish state which has to face another 50 years of struggle against Arab enemies. 28. Findlay. They dare to speak out. 273. There's one more fact in here, but it wouldn't be appropriate for me to jump ahead and try to find out what it says or does before I get there, do you think? I don't like cheating. You know, yesterday when I was reading, I noticed something afterward. The metrics. I didn't notice it before. 10%. Before the partition, the ratio of Jews to Arab was 10%. The 10% means something different. If you have some sort of religious manifest destiny, it's based on trying to get somebody else to fucking pay your taxes then if you grow up in a military upbringing and understands that there is need for cooperation in international relations, including in regards to addressing matters associated with insider threats, including insider threats that might be trying to challenge your morale or your loyalty in order to unduly influence you to abrogate not only your constitutional duties and rights, but to compel you to demonstrate loyalty to those unsuited to even think they are entitled to claim it in acts of lewdness or moral depravity. I consider sexual extortion to be a matter of moral depravity. I consider child sex predation to be a matter of moral depravity. I consider people that are actually unqualified to attempt to coerce other people to cooperate with covering up their crime to be moral depravity. Just so you know. <laughs>